Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depends on the part of the world. You are joining us from Air Mazichika Austin. And, um, we are here once again to also look at issues as they develop. Uh, because we're in a very changing world. We're in a changing world where um, the world is in a very fast move. And it takes those with the uh, ability to study in a quick path to understand where our dear world is heading to. Uh, unfortunately, my, I, 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 I have been unable to post for a couple of days now, owing to the fact that my accounts are under restriction. Uh, my accounts are under restrictions, and uh, the only thing uh, we can do now currently is to make a live video against posting. So, Facebook have not really been kind to, to some of us. So I cannot post, I cannot comment, I cannot react. I can only do just live video. And uh, that is why I have to make use of the only available option of communication on this platform. Uh, but nevertheless, on Twitter, we have been also been active on Twitter, doing everything we can do to get the messages uh, passed across. No mistake about that. We've been trying our best on Twitter platform to disseminate this gospel. So um, I believe you are getting us loud and clear. I believe from your own point, uh, we are coming out audibly as much as we can. And uh, I trust you will also give me a response to that, making use of the comment section to let us know how loud and clear we are coming out from. Then we have to also proceed because it is in our dictionary to proceed. Proceeding is part of our agenda. We make no mistake, and we owe no more to any apology in, you know, um, getting these messages across to nook and crannies of the world. Actually, a lot of things are happening while I'm waiting for a response in, uh, as regards to if we are coming out loud and clear. Uh, you also need to help in making use of your sharing uh, button to make sure this program is shared. Because all we are going to talk about this evening is how the world is changing, talking about change in terms of uh, political space, changing in terms of relationship, talking about international relationship, change on um, multifaceted uh, Thank you, Rilava. Um, Multifaceted approaches, how things are really turning around. Uh, like most of us don't know, uh, there, there are some of us who have the school of thought that when uh, issues are on a right, a rowdy ground, or rowdy note, that that is when things are happening. It's hard time we understand that most times the world evolves in a noiseless manner. Make no mistake about that. The, the world revolves in a very noiseless manner. But, so but most of us who believe that it's only when there is a hysteria, there is only when there is an heart burst, you know, there is, it's only when there is noise that that is when things are happening. We must develop our minds, we must develop our uh, thoughts to understand that you can effect a change on the environment of quietness. You can you know, effect a change without 
making an oral communication. And that is exactly what is actually happening in our world. And I believe for those of us who are here, at the end of this program, we're going to um, get exposed and get mentally in touch to the realities of the now, uh, things that are happening and we must understand that. So, uh, yeah, at the level of international politics, in fact, as a matter of fact, it's important I point our minds to the fact that there is no local politics without international politics. These are is uh, you know is structured that is how the system is structured you cannot run effective international engagement without having a domestic fortification inversely you cannot also have an effective domestic uh, prevalence without also having the understanding of international engagement. And that is one unique thing about IPO. Not because I am a member of IPO, but owing to the fact that IPO have organically evolved and integrated from dual personality of having a domestic base and international base. And that's why it's so difficult to, you see, it's easy for anybody to say, I will crush it. But getting the result of that language has been so difficult to achieve. Because IPOB, if IPOB did not, you know, dualize her personality vis-a-vis domestic personality and foreign personality, believe me, could have been a severe challenge for them to get, for her to get where she is today. One of the problems most other people have, which is, you know, inimical to their advancement, is because they refuse to understand the reality of it. So, the world, as it is today, at, as it is in 21st century, is so interconnected that both local front and foreign front are too entangled for you to separate. So we are having a system of the world. The world, we are having a new, we are ushering a new international system. But it's so funny that most people don't understand that the world is transcending from a particular power permutation to a new power permutation. You see, it's, it's happen, happening in a, a, a geometric form. It's happening in a form that just the way the earth revolves, sorry, the earth revolves, or revolves, so to say. And we are on the edge that is rotating without feeling the impact of that rotation. And that is exactly how international political permutation is currently happening. So it is our responsibility, those of us who derive joy, those of us who have spent years and the passion in investigating international development, in international developments, it is our responsibility to bring this evolution, to bring this, you know, movement into your understanding and into your limelight. Very, very important. We owe you that responsibility to do that, and you own us that responsibility to assimilate as much as you can while we unveil and usher in various transitionary uh, stages of
global powers and what have you. So we are currently facing a change of power. Some persons will say that change of power have not fully taken place. They might be right in their own analysis. Some persons will say um, it has fully taken place. They also might be right in their own analysis. But I don't want, I will not uh, fall in uh, to any school of thought, whether the concluding school of thought or the evolving school of thought. I'm not going to fall in, in any of the divide. But what is paramount here is that I'm going to bear, you know, uh, 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 concentrate in pointing out several facts, several references, pointing out several realities on your table. Then you cannot judge if actually the power shift have finally consolidated. Has it has it been formalized or is still undergoing the process of formalization? You have that judgment to make. You own the absolute responsibility to make that judgment. So uh, uh, recently, uh, over, for the past over 100 days now, uh, we noticed a war, a war broke out in Eastern Europe. And hastily, uh, some persons say the war was going to lead to the demise of Russia. Some persons also predicted that the war was going to, um, I know, um, because the war led to, you know, a vicious circle sanctions on Russian state or uh, Russian Federation. And some persons came to the con hasty conclusion. It's hasty because most of the early predictions when the war broke out where um, that Putin was not going to survive 100 days or sustain the war beyond 30 days because you could see heavy sanctions coming from the Western nation. Although people call it sanction, I call it um, early hypocrisy because no single sanction they made on Russian energy is still sustainable. So I see it as an early hypocrisy, early double standard the Western nation Play. But what we are now seeing is a new world system. The, 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 the war that broke out, or the war that is ongoing between Russia and Ukraine, have opened a lot of, in fact, it has demystified a lot of powers we, 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 we respected, we fear before the war time. And believe you me, one of those powers that are battling, struggling currently to see how to survive, to see how to hold her footprint, one of the powers, or some of the powers currently, is United States. United States is currently battling on how to, uh, whether she will fall back to pre-war status. You know, in the pre-war, I'm talking about before the war broke out, between Russia and Ukraine, the United States was on, I won't say overrated, but she was so reverent, reverent, she was so feared, she was so, okay, thank you, my, I think my brother is also here, uh, Washington JP, Pasmaga, who is a uh, thank you, he's a colleague, he's a wonderful colleague who does a lot of research, uh, joint research with me, and I'm happy to have you here, Mazu Zeko. So thank you for coming. So um, what we are talking this evening is going to be an eye-opening for you to understand the dimension of the global wind. Because if you don't understand it, you will never appreciate when we say to you that Nigerian, Nigerian's aid is inevitable. You will think we are talking what we don't know. But we, we deem it uh, uh, feed to get this information across. Like I usually said, by the special grace of the Most High, we are going to we will definitely get a complete equipment. So we do a lot of projections. We have a lot of pictorial video evidences to back up our submissions. But unfortunately, deficiency in equipment, you know, rob us this opportunity. And also by extension, also rob, robs you. Because it could have been more convincing if we are projecting videos and pictures. 
and other related articles, you know, uh, or documents, so to say. So, uh, before the war broke out, the United States was highly reverent, you know, seen as a hegemon or a superpower. But as I speak to you, uh, um, you know, but as I speak to you currently, U.S. is backing to get her image restored as it was before the war broke out between Russia and the Ukraine. Because um, U.S. is so in a very strong mess as far as reputation, as far as status is concerned, as far as international respect she previously had is concerned. The, the, the incident between Russia and the Ukraine depleted that respect, destroyed her reputation, you know, deflected in a strong and a deep state the, 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 the respect that the U.S. was, you know, attached to. And the second power that is also in a severe battle, as I speak to you, is the UK, United Kingdom. United Kingdom is in a very severe mix. And um, it's important I'm going to also tell you how every single power she had her own mess. U UK is also in a very severe mess, owing to the fact that the war broke out between Ukraine and Russia. And I'm going to tell you how every power is affected. Another power that is also in a dilemma is the regional bloc known as European Union. And the European Union is also battling her own fate, causing of Russian-Ukraine war. Now, let's go back to the United States. How the United States ran into mess that is eating her up. As I speak to you, U.S. is doing a lot of secret moves that I'm going to tell you, and it's really shocking. It's really shocking for you to know that these things are happening. You cannot see it on CNN. You cannot see it in mainstream media. You cannot see it in so-called uh, passive platforms of narratives. But trust me, because we go beyond the passive surfaces. We go beyond the elementary structures to unearth a lot of information. And that's why sometimes people will say to us, uh, is, isn't this fake news? How did you get it? And we laugh over it because you don't need a passive mind to get a deep information. You must understand that. Passivity in, in search of deep information is an illusion. So if you want to go deep, you must declote yourself the mentality of, you know, being on your comfort zone and get served putting for vital, high sensor and vital information. So to the United States, most of you never knew what happened in Ukraine. Prior to this time, Ukraine has been a, a very important channel remember you have to share this program because many people need to join so before the war broke out ukraine has been a very sensitive program for politicians in the united states and of course the elements of new world order ukraine has been a place where those corrupt politicians in the united states do their money laundering through through Ukraine. A lot of monies we are long out from United States and others. Ukraine also has also been a place there where a lot of bio labs. Some of us might not understand what bio labs are. Biolabs are these laboratories, scientifically established laboratories for biological weapons. 
Yes. Because there are various, I think, three types of nuclear weapons. There are three types of nuclear weapons. We have atomic bomb, we have a biological weapon, and which other one? So in Ukraine, there is a, a well established lab case where United States and her Western allies run a lot of laboratory viruses. And these viruses are established as a weapon of war. Most of you don't know that. So many sicknesses you hear on this planet Earth were artificially manufactured in labs as a weapon of control, as a weapon of attack, as an offensive weapon. And such a things were also existing in Ukraine. A lot of secret viruses were you know, manufactured, produced by secret services in US and in Europe. So what the war did in Ukraine was to destroy these centers in Ukraine. Russia, because Russian intelligence knew that these things were existing at their neighborhood. The, the, the Crimea, the government of Russia, is aware that these labs were all existing in their neighborhood. But because the concept of sovereignty, there is no how Russia could enter the Ukraine to dislodge or destroy these laboratories. Russia cannot just do that. So to Russia, the provocation the West did using Ukraine against her was a good opportunity for them to destroy those labs. And guess what? A lot of these labs were destroyed. So many of them were destroyed. And of course, a lot of finances smuggled as a uh, laundered money from United States. You know, yes, I think somebody has helped me. There are uh, uh, three types of weapons of mass destruction. You have atomic bomb, the one that was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Remember that story, Second World War. You have biological weapon. This is where you manufacture viruses, using it to attack an enemy state. And you have the chemical weapons. Chemical weapon is like where you have a gas. There are very toxic gas. You know, you can drop within an environment and the people will be a problem. It's called chemical weapons. So, in Ukraine, there was labs established for biological weapons. So, to Russia, these were opportunities to destroy these centers of evils in their neighbors. And also, it was also an opportunity for Russia also to take control of those channels of money laundry. Most Western politicians we are using Ukraine to run. run. Most of you never knew that. Even Hunter Biden, the first son of current Joe Biden, was even awarded an energy contract in Ukraine when Hunter Biden never had any study on energy. He never had any knowledge on energy. But because the corrupt Ukrainian government wanted to use him to have access to his father, when his father was the vice president to Obama, they gave him a heavy contract in Ukraine. So Ukraine has been a, 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 a channel of dating deals, even in the Biden's family and not the rest of them. So to Russia, it was a clear opportunity to dislodge those activities. But look at what happened. Immediately the war broke out. 
Because I'm telling you how every single country is suffering the consequences of their miscalculation in Eastern Europe. Immediately the war broke out. There was heavy mobilization by the United States and the UK. In fact, as a matter of fact, one thing I want you to understand, whenever you're discussing Russian Ukrainian crisis, see it from the lens of UK induced crisis. It was UK at the background using America to, to instigate that war. And somebody might ask, uh, what, what was the what was the benefit of UK in the whole gala? UK, you know, UK had a very well controlling competition. She doesn't want anybody to compete with her. In fact, the war you're seeing in Russia, Ukraine is not war between Russia and Ukraine. It's a war between Russia and U UK. Unfortunately, Zelensky becomes a proxy or becomes a proxy of the United Kingdom at the detriment of his own people. Most of you don't understand. And you might ask, why should the UK be much interested? It's simple. UK hates competition. UK hates where she plays a backseat uh, 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 services. Most of you don't understand why UK left European Union. Not because she wants freedom. UK entered the Euro European Union, I think, in 1979. And her intention was, as she was entering European Union, she was going to control, inflict, assert a heavy opportunity among the bloc block members but unfortunately to her when she entered the european union from 1979 till when she left she was finding it difficult to act smart germany and france because germany and, germany and france and the luxembourg belarus luxembourg germany and france were the pioneers of that vision they were the ones who who, who established the European Union before all that came. It is Belarus, Luxembourg, Germany, and uh, France. And of course, it started from a, a sectorianism or one sector development, which is energy and, uh, yes, from energy sector. So, when UK discovered that she could not as smart Germany and France in the European Union. She left. She decided to leave because she does not want to belong anywhere she cannot control. That is UK for you. That is United Kingdom for you. The accolade great is still strong in her heart. She still wants to be regarded as a great Britain. That accolade great runs high in her head. That is UK for you. So when she could not survive influencing decision in you, she left. She literally left European Union. Not because of freedom. Most of you don't understand. She left because she was not having a high influence in the policy of European Union. She left. Now, when she left, she discovered that if you come to Europe, it's all about European Union and the Russia. But because she had left, she now believed that she had to powers to contend in Europe. One is European Union, another is Russia. So for UK, the best way to weaken European Union is for her to instigate member states to activate the article of disassociation. 
So UK government, immediately she left, she, she activated the war against the European Union. And how she activated that war was to secretly ask member states, other member states of the European Union, to consider to leave. She began to instigate, let others also have a referendum on how to leave the European Union. In fact, it was a very big project UK carried, because the UK does not want any other power in Europe to challenge her. So for her, if she weakens European Union, she will be the strong power in Europe. But to her also, that in Eastern Europe is a growing Russia, heavily growing Russia, that needs to be weakened. So do you know what she did? She moved, she has been moving Americans to keep on provoking Russia through the platform of NATO. Because she wants Russia to be weakened so that the way European Union will be going down, the same time Russia will be going down and she will become the only outstanding power in Europe. But unfortunately, she miscalculated. All her games against Russia became a flaw. America was lured into that. And the European Union was also mobilized. But little do they understand that while they were making preparation, the Kremlin, that is the uh, Russian Federation, have taken a whole lot of years understanding all this movement and also making a preparation for them. In fact, at a time ahead of what is happening today, Russia solved her dependency relations. Russia pulled out five years, six years, those areas she knew that if war broke out, she would find it difficult to survive as a result of social so sanctions. She gradually bolted out from those things. Those things countries were doing for her, that she knew that if she raised sanction on that, she would suffer. She began to prepare it for herself 10 years ago, ahead of what is to come. And guess what? When the war broke out, every single of every single power or belligerent power talking about us uk and european union are severely suffering the consequences of their miscalculation and of course on that evaluation or on the estimation of russian federation to us as i speak to you us is, is in a very big mess i believe some of you are watching me from united states and Trust me, you are buying your gasoline above five dollars a liter. There is energy crisis in the US, inflation is high, and of course, US foreign policy power is in a severe reduction. They respect the US, the, the influence and command the US used to have. The respect she used to command among committee of nations is in a severe depletion, causing of their miscalculation in the ongoing crisis. Now, let me tell you things that are happening that CNN is not going to tell you, BBC is not going to, to tell you. Uh, uh, mainstream Western media are not going, media are not going to tell you, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, are not going to tell you. U.S. is in a severe bleeding. Most of you don't understand. As I speak to you, as this program is going on, Joe Biden is to visit Gulf states, Saudi Arabia and UAE. Wow! Look at what is happening. They sanction Russia, and they say they, they are not going to buy Russian oil. And make no mistake, Russia is the highest oil-producing country on the surface of Earth, followed by Saudi Arabia. 
They sanctioned Russia, and their plan was, if they say they are not going to buy Russian oil, that they are going to compel Saudi Arabia, UAE, and all the rest of them. I won't mention Nigeria, because Nigeria oil is nowhere among the standard of, inter the standard of international consumption. Most of you don't understand. Nigeria oil is on that development. among committee of nations. Because somebody, I know somebody out there will be saying, uh, but Nigeria has oil. We are talking about developed sectors of energy. That is what we are talking here. We are not talking about country that does not even know the quality of what she's producing. So, to the uh, intention of, it was the intention of the United States of mobilizing sanction, of course, international sanction against Russian state. Then they will not compel Saudi Arabia, UAE, and other oil producing states to replace those number of quantities that Russia could not supply on energy markets. But one thing the United States failed to understand is that Joe Biden's government, in fact, one of the statements Joe Biden made during his, uh, his campaign was this, that he was going to make Saudi Arabia to be a paradise state. The word paradise means an outcast. That was the language the current government of the uh, President of the United States made on his campaign. He promised to the American people that for the fact that MBS, Saudi Arabia's uh, crown king, was fingered in killing of the journalist in Turkey. Do you remember those, those stories? Or oh, have we forgotten so soon? The, 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 uh, the, uh, the, Saudi, the Saudi Arabian uh, journalist that was killed in Turkey. And his body disembarked. Joe Biden, during the during his campaign, said that Donald Trump was not heavy on Saudi Arabia. He was, that he, he, he did not punish Saudi Arabia and his crown king enough. That when he enter, if he enters, so if if you he is to be elected, because that was during campaign, that he was going to make sure that Saudi Arabia is placed as an outcast country. And guess what? He won. And that statement he made led Saudi Arabia to ignore America's plea. Because America's intention was that um, if the place heavy sanctions on Russia, then they will ask Saudi Arabia to pump enough energy, enough oil in the market. But when, when America approached Saudi Arabia and the UAE, they told America point back. In fact, in several locations, they did not pick the call of Joe Biden. That is the first signal they gave to him. They did not pick his call. And he is currently preparing to go to Saudi Arabia to beg them, to go to UAE to beg them. Because he, his intention was he's going to put sanction on Russian energy and run to Saudi Arabia and say, please pump more oil so that there won't be limited oil in OPEC markets, thereby making the price to be high. That was what they planned. But after that, after they sanctioned Russia, Saudi refused to pump additional from what they used to pump. UAE refused. And why did they refuse? They refused because they, on one, they know that the current American government is not in a good relationship with them. That is one. Two, they understand that high cost of petroleum or high cost of energy is going to give them high revenue because 
The energy is high because it's much are not in the market for the West to buy. The price, because the price is high, Saudi Arabia is going to earn high revenue. And guess what? As I speak to you, Americans are suffering. Inflation is high. Americans are buying, you know, high petroleum from cents. In fact, during the time of Trump, they were buying about less than a dollar per liter. But now they are buying over five dollars per liter. That is what Americans are paying. And Joe Biden and the Democrats have realized that by November they are going to have what we call midterm election. And the Americans are going to punish Democrats severely by making sure that those Democrats going to the Congress will be elected, oh, sorry, will be voted out of seats. So what they are now doing now is how do we bring down the energy cost so that American electorates will not vote the Democrats out of seats come November election, midterm election. So Joe Biden who vowed to Americans that he was going to deal with Saudi Arabia is to run to Saudi Arabia by July to beg Saudi Arabia. Remember, the British people are also suffering their own. Do you understand? British people on their own are also suffering. Inflation is also beating UK. But as I speak to you, for the past 40 years, what the inflation UK is, is experiencing now, they have never seen it for the past 40 years. Now, this is what America is facing. Do you know the shocking thing? I want to tell you the most shocking thing you should understand. Why America and UK are afraid to suspend their sanctions against Russia because they are feeling that it's a kind of going back to their format. Why American, American government and UK government out of you know pride and the ego they are on suicide self-destruction secretly dying in pain because they can't suspend the, 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 the sanctions on russia why they are their arrogances are guiding them the european union voted that from the sanction the germans the french people italy and all the rest of them went to russia and said to russia we are no longer interested in sanctioning you. Supply energies for us. And you can see the European Union economy is regaining back her strength because Russia has started supplying them energy. And UK that is dying in silent, our act of pride is now facing the worst experience she has ever anticipated. The same thing is happening to America. Now, let me not tell you what is happening because I said I'm going to tell you a shocking thing. Both America and UK currently are now funding the war in Ukraine. They are putting billions of dollars in the pocket of Russia. But they are doing that behind the camera. How are they doing it? Because America understands that they, at all costs, they need Russian energy to flow. UK also wants Russian energy to grow. India and China are the ones on the benefit. But what happened? India said they are not going to be part of the sanction. And Russia said, for you to have done this, I'm going to give you less price. Not what energy is causing in energy market. I'm going to sell you at a cheaper price. China, I'm going to sell to you at a cheaper price. And guess what? Indiana saw that as an opportunity to buy a lot of Russian oil because it's cheap. Russia is selling to India lesser to what the price is. 
The same thing is happening to China. India now saw it as a market opportunity. Do you know what India is doing? India will now go to US that is in a hunger for this energy. Go to UK and say to them, pay me so, so, so amount and I will give you, sell oil to you. And which oil is India selling to? So India buys a lot. So India buys a lot from Russia. India liquidates Russian energy reserve. And Americans are lining at the doorstep of India, begging for India to sell to them. Indirectly, giving India money to hand over to Russia. Making Russia more strong because Russia is now having more money to even pound Ukraine heavier while America watches. The same America and UK that say, eh, we can we will not buy and now throwing dollars, billions of dollars to India. And India is not happy because she's now doing retailing. She buys at wholesale price from Russia and sell at a retailing price to, to foolish you can the foolish United States. Isn't that funny? It's so, it's so, and Joe Biden, you know, it's so funny. And the same people who are doing this come on CNN and say, why is India buying Russian energy? And they go back behind, after speaking on camera, they go behind and say, India, you know what we just said is to be politically correct. Please, don't stop selling to us. And that is what is happening. And why Russian economy is growing, her currency rebounding, in fact, ruble, Russian ruble is rated to be the best. And for those of you who don't understand, from the time of the outbreak of that war till now, Russia has made over 20 billion US dollars in revenue. This is a country that is in the war. This is supposedly a country that is under sanction. Is now making higher revenue than what she used to make before the war. Isn't that miraculous? Isn't that miraculous? Now look at what is now happening. Russia has been heavily enriched as a result of the foolishness of the West. Russia, as I speak to you now, is now deeply rich because these countries have foolishly and out of miscalculation put a lot of their monies out of distillation in the hand of Kremlin, in the hand of Russia. Do you know what is happening? They are now looking for a way because they have realized that they are the ones funding the war against Ukraine indirectly without knowing. Because the energy they are buying in India, India is handling the, the same money back to it's just like in India the way we were saying here. India goes to Russian shop, taste product at a very cheaper price, run to the market, <laughs> and at the door, he just see UK and US begging to sell. And he said on expensive. So to him, the idea is praying that the war should continue. And the Western countries are now realizing the danger of allowing the war to continue. Do you know what? They are now telling Ukraine to allow Eastern Europe to hand over Eastern Europe to Russia. Because they know that the more the war is continuing, the more the Western economies are collapsing. And the more they will be in a desperation to be handing over their reserve to Russia. And the more Russia will be so rich to even fight them in their own soul. And it's becoming a terror. It's becoming a headache for Wall Street to manage, for number 10 down the street to know how to come out of it. And what have you? And this is what U.S. is suffering. Now, let me now tell you what is happening. Russia has now decided to recreate a new foreign policy. Most of you don't understand. 
at the diff, at the at the end of the default USSR, which collapsed in 1990 or 1991, immediately USSR collapsed. The current Russian Federation maintained a foreign policy of not getting involved outside Eastern Europe. That was the foreign policy they maintained for themselves. They were not interested to come to Africa. They were not interested to go to any other place. They were just interested to see how to control their own environment, Eastern Europe. And they said to the NATO member states, please don't take crisis to us in our neighbors. They signed the agreement, though NATO violated. NATO to try, attempted to took the war to them. They tried it in Georgia. Remember the Ossetra and Georgia war? They tried it in Poland. Remember during Bush, the anti missile shield in, in Black Sea. During Bush tenor, they installed it in Poland. They also tried in Ukraine. The war is evidential. So Russia, Putin has changed that foreign policy. And Russia has decided to go into places the Western nations have open hand and contend it with them. Do you know what pushing where Putin said? Putin said to the, uh, two or three days ago that there are only two kinds of countries in the world, the colonies and the sovereign. So to Putin, there are still colonialism. You know, the idea of colonialism ended in the 1960s when the United Nations ran a policy of decolonization. The, the United Nations policy of decolonization was to end colonialism. So to the Western nations, colonialism has ended. Nobody is under colonization. Though there are imperialism, there is imperialism, which is indirect war of colonialism. So Putin is not telling the Western nations that even those who you said you have decolonized, you have given independent, we still see them as not being independent. We still believe that people are still agitating. Even within those entities you say you have given independent, we are recognizing the fact that people still want to be free. And this is a serious thing. Do you know what Russia is doing currently? For those of us who care to know, in Southern America, Russia has taken a very severe battle to America in America's backyard. Russia is even moving a lot of arsenals, moving a lot of influences in Southern America. Of course, Southern America is at the backyard of the United States and is giving the United States a headache. In fact, as a matter of fact, United States have decided to revisit what we call consular cases. There are what we call consular cases. Uh, I think it was a uh, cases of 1901. In 1901, uh, some uh, some places like uh, Puerto Rico and the Guam. For those of you who are watching for United States, you know Puerto Rico is an American colony. Guam is also an American colony. But do you know what is happening? Because of what Russia has decided to do, Russia is now trying to move on those people, move to the help of those people who desire to get rid of American pressure on them, to get rid of United Kingdom pressure on them. So to America, America is trying to hasten everything fast before the arrival of Russia. So there is what we call consular cases sorry, insular cases in America. Insular cases is the Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court interpretation in 1901, which gives America power to be in charge, to be in ownership of Puerto Rico and Guam. But as I speak to you, United States Supreme Court is now revisiting that insular cases, thereby trying to see a way, if possible, to grant these people their independent Puerto Rican Guam. 
because Russia is now trying to, you know, campaign, champion the cause of total decolonization, including places America are. And that's what, guess what? American Supreme Court is now revigorating, rejuvenating, re reawakening their Supreme Court position in 1901, which made Puerto Rico and one an American colonist. So America is trying to run away from her own subjugation against the people of Puerto Rico and one cause of current Russian foreign policy, which is going to wherever people are subjugated and champion for liberation. In fact, as a matter of fact, the war going on between Russia and Ukraine is a war of liberation. Russia wants to liberate the people of Eastern Ukraine who are being maltreated badly by the Ukrainian government. So apart from that too, there is a place, as I speak to you, there is a place known as Marshall Island. You can Google it. Google it. It's within the Pacific. In this Google, uh, in this Marshall Island, as it, my Marshall Island is made up of fifty thousand people. This is an island in the Pacific. It's also under American control. And these people have been crying over. Do you know what America does? American government does in Marshall Island. They test all kinds of atomic weapons, biological weapons, chemical weapons in Marshall Island. That's what America does in Marshall Island. This is where you have about 50,000 people inhabiting. But America see it as a testing ground. They test all kinds of nuclear weapons there. In fact, if you make a research, a lot of people in Marshall, the, the, the indigenous people of Marshall Island, majority of them are exposed to radiations. Yes, they are suffering of radioactive penetration in their system. And America never cared. United States never given for. But as I speak to you, because of what is happening now, because of Russia, policy of contending with these powers overseas, America is not struggling. As I speak to you, they are not asking for a fresh agreement with the people of Marshall Island. Because they understand that these people can welcome Russia and Russia will help them to rebel America. So U.S. is not trying to make her ways. The people of Marshall Island were guinea pigs, if I should use a very mild language. They were used as a test run. So that is how America is trying to prepare her future. Because America and the UK ignorantly and indirectly have funded Russia and made Russia to be as richer than what she used to be before the war broke out. And in the case of the UK, Russia is officially entering Africa to contend with the UK. And of course, you should understand that Africa has a lot of, Africa is a battleground because of a lot of interest parties. Russia, Russia is entering in a very aggressive way. Uh, China is here already. France is here. UK is here. America is here in Africa. And some other powers as well. But do you know what is happening? It will interest you to know. Russia wants to hit those places UK leverage on. And there is no part of Africa that UK has upper economic claim for than Nigeria. And most of you don't understand. Russia a few weeks ago told the world that America is running 
a lot of laboratory biological labs in Nigeria, and they mentioned Kaduna, they mentioned Abuja, they mentioned um, Lagos. But most of us who are not schooled in the language and titles of diplomacy thought it's just a mere news. It's never a mere news. What Russia did through the publication of that information is that, that their eyes are seriously heavy in Nigeria. Is it against America? No. Who? Against British interest. And that is how the future looks like. Nigeria is going to be a very heavy ground of contention. And I keep saying to people, uh, uh, sometimes those of you who are really conservative followers of me, of mine, I mean to say, I always talk about Korean Peninsula. So many of us don't understand the technicality of the undertone of that concept. I was pushing out. When we talk about Korean Peninsula, I always say that Biafra can never, or Biafra will not come. Or I didn't say Biafra will not come until, rather what I, what I was trying to say, what we speed of the restoration of Biafra is when we are able to give Nigerian space a Korean Peninsula space. I'm going to explain to you. North Korea and South Korea were once one singular country before 1950s. But do you know what happened? Ideological divide separated the two. America supported the South, and, uh, the South Korea, America and her Western allies. And the Russia China supported the North Korea in a war. The two superpowers were fighting a prosy war. And at the time, they got tormented. When I mean tormented, they got to a point that the two powers are tired. Not to, Nothing can happen. Nobody is pushing forward. Nobody is pushing backward. They were stalled. There was a storm. They were stormed. And guess what? At that point, there was an armistice. They signed an armistice, and the Korean Peninsula was divided into two: North Korea and South Korea. And life went on till today. The two countries are separate independent states, doing their own things in their different way. And that is exactly the future of Nigeria. We are getting to a point that Russia is highly interested. The West are also interested. China and Russia is going to definitely have a common ground in terms of interest. Make no mistake about that. They will definitely align them themselves on their own interest. UK and America will also have their own interest to project. But there is a mistake some of us do make. And I always say it is a mistake. It's a mistake because some of us are very, very emotional about international development. International developments are not issues of emotion. It's not issues of you post on um, social media. And why can't leadership align with Russia? It doesn't work the way you think. Issues of international relations, issues of diplomacy are highly issues of secrecy. In fact, I will see it as a fraud, as childish, and as a height of stupidity. If leadership of this struggle will tell us that they have written to Russian Federation, if they come on air and make such statement, to me it amounts to foolishness. Why do I say it? I say that because in international politics, you don't go extreme left, neither do you go extreme right. You do what we call balancing, or you believe more. You don't go extreme left, you don't go extreme right. And also, you do what we call understudy. You, you must understudy every single development. And no man who studies stops. No, 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 no. When you're studying, there's always quietness, peace, placidity, absolute placidity. People might be worried, is this man around? But only you know that you're around. But understanding development, that is exactly how it ought to be. 
That is exactly how it ought to be. So, in this case, what we need is to study the development, do the engagements we are doing, but everything must be done behind cameras. If it's done before camera, it's now a childish display. Although there is a time it becomes a camera thing, but at the time of you reaching out, it's always a behind camera affairs. It's not public then. It's only kids that want it to be in public discourses because they lack the elementary understanding of how international engagements are done. So, presently we are getting to that point because, believe me, we are right, Russia will make the whole mess of British interest in Nigeria. Already you see what they did. Most of you never knew why um, France is seriously betraying the West and somehow supporting Russia. But the, most of you never knew that Macron calls Putin more than him, calls Putin as if he's calling his girlfriend. Some of you never knew about that. Emmanuel Macron of France have been in a constant communication with Putin. In fact, the West are accusing him of leaking a lot of, leaking their secrets, that he always leak, leaks their secrets to Putin. Why is Emmanuel Macron making a U-turn? Or why did he make a U-turn? He made a U-turn because he understood that French interest in Africa is in jeopardy. What Russia did to France in money can never be forgotten in the history of French people. Russia bullied French soldiers, soldiers out of money, not with their own conventional military. They did it with their own, you know, security company. Permit me to use that word. Russia, uh, French soldiers in Mali, I'm not telling you historical event, I'm telling you event of about less than five months. Russian security company, just the way you have a Blackwater, American security company that operated in Iraq. You remember Blackwater Gate or Blackwater Gates? You remember that scandal? Russia has a security network that is operation in Mali. And that security company backed up the Malian junta. Even when French, French, uh, French government planned a coup or counter coup, planned assassination against the man, Russian security company protected the Malian junta and helped them to drove away French soldiers in Mali. Now look at what happened. After that operation was successfully carried away in Mali, a lot of French countries or the Francophonians began to see the need to run to Russia for help. And you know what the help Russia always give them? Russia always teach them how to drive away French people in their soul and protect them. So to Emmanuel Macron, Emmanuel Macron understand that with what Putin did in Mali and Central African Republic, most of you don't understand what happened in Central African Republic. The full armies you see the running down to Nigeria we are drove away by Russian machineries in Central African Republic. A group was set up known as Anti-Balakan Group because the full armies in Central African Republic we are killing indigenous people. And this people, the Christians rose from a militia group known as an Anti-Balakan with the help of Russia. Death with them, 
A lot of them ran to Sudan. A lot of them ran to other parts of neighboring African countries to Central African Republic. And some of them you are seeing are the ones coming to Nigeria that their brother wanted to settle through the ruler project. Russia helped the, 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 the people in Central African Republic and dealt with these people mercilessly. So you cannot understand what Russia is doing in Africa that most of you never knew. So Emmanuel Macron now understood that with what Russia motivated an African leader to be money, that Togo will one day run to Russia for help, but the Republic will do that. Equatoria, in sorry, Africa will do that, and not the rest of them. So to Emmanuel Macron, the best thing to do is to see how to work in understanding in synergy with Putin so that France does not lose the remaining African countries loyal to them. Because what happened in, in Mali became a litmus test of how powerful Russia can be how reliable Russia can be. But make no mistake, it's not only money that Russia began to show her power. Not only in Syria, Russia defeated America's interest in Syria because America's interest under Obama was to remove Abashir, sorry, Assad, not Abashir, Abashir is that of Sudan. American and Western interest was to remove Assad of Syria. But Russia stood in Syria, defended Assad. In fact, Russia have her fifth fleet, fifth naval fleet stationed in Syria, defended Assad and made sure the West never removed Assad. And he also repeated it in Mali. So now, the question you should ask yourself, or best for answer is this. If Russia could deal with France, that is not an act enemy to her in Mali, do you think Russia will support that or think twice in dealing with British interest in Nigeria? You know what the answer should be? If France, that is not on the extreme quarrel with Russia, could be boot, boot, you know, booted out of Mali forcefully against French government, uh, French government interest. Are you not telling me Russia will be in, boot, you know, sweeping out British interest in Nigeria? Now you now understand what I'm saying. But if you also look at internal structures and dynamic in Nigeria, I have really spent a quite, uh, quite number of time over an hour, and we don't need to also bore you down so that you don't get bored. You know, much analysis leads to paralysis, so that we don't bore you down. So let me see how to cut short so that we come to an end. Then next time we also uh, continue. So if you also look at if you also look at um, the structures in Nigeria, the composition of Nigeria, one thing will tell you that Nigeria is naturally going to ignite the process of making herself or creating a scene of Korean Peninsula. In fact, she is working speedily in igniting that scenario. I'm telling you, I might not go deep, 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 deep to some things until a certain time, but I want you to understand that Nigeria is speedily working towards creating Korean Peninsula scene. In her soul, a lot of 
Somebody said to me, um, somebody wanted to seek my opinion in B2B's uh, presidential vine. And I said to the person, I said, I don't think we, sh we will be wise if we spend our time being his interest and pursuit. The reason being that P2B belong to a particular school of thought. And we are this school of thought, the school of thought that believe that good leadership can lead to good Nigeria. I have no issue with that because everyone's ideology is sacrosanct to him in as much as he don't want to infringe uh, upon my own line of thinking. I have no problem with it. But I said to the person, if IPOB carries out a media campaign, which will have the media strength to demean P2B presidential pursuit, what we have successfully done is to destroy a scenario that is evolving to our own advantage. To our own advantage in the sense that those who fear the evil mass emergence of president of Nigeria. To stop it to be. They will do everything at their own power to prove to the likes of it to be and his you know numerous supporters that Nigeria like an animal farm written by George Orwell that some people are more important than others. So if IPOB goes into stopping that future remark, which is going to be advantageous to us, that means we are not smart. What we need is the principle of Jesus. There is a principle he uses. When they ask him, is it not better, the disciples ask him, is it not better for us to Cut the wrong thing. He said, No. It's better let the good and the bad to grow together. Because there are people who are not mentally tough, like us, that will say we want total separation. They are falling on the line of P2B school of thought, which is what we need is good leadership to create an equal and egalitarian society. This is his own philosophy. This is one I got. It's really super. I have no issue with that. But the truth is that the primordial forces, those forces that believe in their own crude and shrewd, shrewd mentality that there are animals that are more equal than others will do everything possible at their own reach to frustrate and wreak out the system against P2B. In so doing, the likes of P2B and the followers will now run to us and understand. that all we have been saying is just true. Let me tell us something. You see, we must be wise. We must be tactical and we must be strategic. There are things you are allowed to flow on this home. It's, you see, you are allowed it to flow, but what you should be at the background is to have what you call control position. You don't obstruct, but you control. There are things you don't obstruct. Obstructing destroys your agenda. But you allow a free flow of current, but at the background, you have what you call control cycle or cycle. Very, very important. 
Let me tell us some of us, so many of us. You see, if we had stopped Omahi to contest for the presidential seat, he wouldn't have known how stupid Ohanese is. He wouldn't have also known how stupid his fellow Eastern politicians are. He wouldn't have also known that the system, the Nigerian system, is systemed in a way that there is no place for a woman. If we had told him, and if we have mobilized our resources at stopping him to get to the point of mess he got himself in Abuja, him and Rochas, if we had mobilized all our resources to say, no, don't go to Abuja, we will stop you, they will not. But they went, they saw, and they came back in shame. And they seem to be preaching what they call the message of division. They are not the one preaching that message. The message we preached and they proscribed us, they are the ones preaching it. So, this is my personal submission. I speak as a Chica Austin. What we need to do is not to stop it to be, it's not to mobilize our media resources against him or this. We should allow him, he's doing excellent, he's marvelous. In fact, as a matter of fact, if Nigeria is a regional government, a regional structure, if Nigeria is a is decentralized system, where you have a, 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 region, a regional system, believe you me, to do the worst will never even allow Tunubu in his health status, in his mental disposition to even be a counselor. Neither would that the worst allow Atiku and his antecedent. We, we remember the scandal of uh, Transcorp and uh, you know the selling of national assets. We are all, we are all here when all these things were happening. Even the other one will never give a ticket, second chance. Among all of them, P2B is incomparably outstanding. But guess what? The primordial forces that are embedded in egophobic tendency will bring P2B to us. Because P2B will get to the point and they will push him back to his people. You see? There are things that when they are working, you just allow it to flow because it's definitely going to pass to you. <laughs> it's going definitely going to pass to you, pass back to you. Let me tell us, some of us never knew. Before 1940, before 1949, the state of Israel was found in 1949. Before 1949, or should I say before 1940, at the center of the Second World War, prior to that time, there were a lot of Jews that were asked, that were told by their brothers. Because most of you should understand that the Holocaust that happened in Europe did not just the, 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 the Nazis did not just wake up and start killing the Jews. No, it was you know an evolved hatred. We took a whole lot of years. If we reach Dreyfus affair, in fact, as a matter of fact, the hatred predates. Civil War era, I'm sorry, Second World War era. If you read the uh, Merchant of Venice, you will understand the envious, the envious position of the Europeans against the Jews. If you study the Shakespearean, no, uh, uh, you think that is a drama, or is it a prose? It should be a drama, not a prose. The Merchant of Venice, you will understand. At the, age, at the Shakespearean era, how the Jews were hated. It never stopped that time. Even when that thing was happening, some Jews were telling their fellow Jews, please, can't we consider making a deal? Can't we consider to discover our own 
country, country considered to champion for state of Israel. Do you know what some of these, some of these fellow Jews told those who are down, who in fact told their own IPOB because these these people who were asking for state of Israel could be could be regarded or could be described as the IPOBs of the Jews before 1948. So they were telling them what it entered here and left here. And another incident happened known as Dreyfus Affair. Go and Google it. You study about the Dreyfus Affair, how a Jew, a general, a French army. You see, because most people don't understand that the hatred against the Jews were not only done by the Germans. The Merchant of Venice happened in Italy. So the Jews in Italy were also hated. Dreyfus Affair happened in France. So the Jews in France were also hated. There was also an incident in the UK where the Jews were also, you know, there was a severe anti Semitism in the UK. So it was an all round thing. But the ones they are telling you is the Nazist movement, as if it's only the German. The, the Polish people dealt with the Jews, Ukrainians. This current Ukrainians also dealt with the Jews. It was an all-round hatred against the Jews. But guess what? Some Jews So guess what? Why all these things were happening? Some Jews were saying So while all these things were happening, some Jews were asking their fellow Jews, saying to them, please, let us look for a Zion. Let's look for a Zion. Let's think about homeland. Let's, let's, let's consider the agitation for a homeland. Let's begin the process of asking for our own state and some of them were laughing their brethren they had their own day woman the jews do you understand the jews had their own day woman They had their own Rochas Okorocha. They also had their own Efunefus. Why are we talking about historical antecedents? So that you understand that it's not a contemporary issue. Stupidity predates this time. And of course, parochialism a human system also predates this time. So you can now understand what we are talking about. You can now understand what we are talking about. If you don't understand all these things, if if I don't bring you into if I don't bring these things into your own knowledge, you will not understand. So some some Jews were saying we have to consider this. This is the right thing to do. And their brothers said no. We don't need to. But they got to a point that they experienced the worst thing they have ever anticipated. In fact, as at the time, the draft was, sorry, at the time, as at the time that before declaration was made in 1917, which was a legal document that spearheaded the process of establishment of Jewish homeland and where it is today. 
as at the time of drafting that document, draft for, uh, uh, sorry, not draft for Safir, Buffer Declaration, as of that time, as, as at the time of drafting that document, some Jews were still opposing that move. Some Jews were saying, then this idea of establishing a state of Israel is rubbish. It's nonsense. They, their own Umayyad, Umayyads, their own Rochasis, their own Jews of Kalus, and not because we are busy speaking grammar on British television. We are busy sponsoring and championing documentaries and articles against their own freedom. In 1970, as a matter of fact, they were fighting against that. When, they are, when the IPOBs of the Israelites were asking for movement, their own people were, some of their own Omahis, Rochasis, and others, were busy speaking grammar, telling them how inconsequential, how grand law, how tiny, how a circle they are going to be, how it's going to be uh, politically, inconsequentially, economically backward, socially disconnected, and religiously incoherent for them to talk for, for their own IPOB to talk for establishment of state of Israel. They were speaking grammar. In 1917, during the time of drafting of uh, 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 Buffer Declaration. But when the hammer heated them back in 1937, from 1937 to 1940, if I tell you the number of Jews who find themselves in the ship running to Pal uh, Palestine, where they are today, you will marvel. Something chase all of them, including their own mind. The experience pushed them to realities. So that is my own understanding. Those of our brethren who believe Obi is the the outstanding thing to you know, to talk about, we get to a point, they will meet their own narcissists and we also patiently welcome them and take them <laughs> to the homeland. They will definitely meet them, their own narcissists. So when you start opposing them, what you are encouraging is an in-house division. That is my personal submission. Attacking them is like encouraging the enemy against them. So let them do their thing. Let them push. And let's watch. But from all we know, they will the, the primordial forces want we do everything to, to frustrate them out. Time is coming. We are entering to the heat, the heat of the whole thing. And most of us will understand it. So I want to thank every single one of us who joined us this evening on this program. I want to appreciate you amazingly because remember, if you're not here, we have nothing to talk about. And the most, especially those of us who took time to share this program, you are indeed highly respected. So next time we see, we talk, and we also look at issues from a very wider perspective. So I am Mazichika Austin, and I want to also urge us Keep on praying for our leader, Mazin Mambekanu, a man who has seen it all and refused to, you know, um, throw in the talk. He has been so amazing to us. He has been outstanding to us. We must understand that the stronger we become, the more energy we are infusing in him. So we must be strong. We must be unwavering. And above all, we must be tightened in all we do. So from here, I want to say good night and do have the best of the evening sleep for those of us who are on the night hours. Why for those of us who are on the morning time? 
You enjoy your day, afternoon time, best of wishes. Bye.